gonna let you go. Cause, you know, they figured you suffered enough. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. We gonna do what they say can be done. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm east bound just like no bandit run. Keep your foot hard on the pedal. Some devil my mind them breaks. Let it all hang out, cause we got a run to make. The boys are thirsty in Atlanta, and there's beer in Texarkana. Just because it's not on the front page anymore doesn't mean that there are still a lot of ripple effects of the Russian war of aggression there in the Ukraine. And I was reading a wild story this morning. You know, there are hundreds of thousands of Russians who have wanted to escape uh, Putin's war. And one of the guys that um, kind of exfiltrated himself from the whole thing, guy who defected to the United States, is a guy named Denis Sharanov, who was part of the Russian government. He was a minister. He was the agriculture minister in northern Russia. And now he's a truck driver in Michigan. (laughs) He initially was in Texas. But he said, Texas is too hot. Yeah. He said, it's great up here in Michigan. How about that? Where is Tim Hortons? A lot of Tim's, little, little Tim bits, right? What do they call the things up there? The, um, yeah, Tim bits. Is right. that where they are, Tim the, bits? The, the, uh, your little uh, donut holes or donut something? Holes, or the, yeah. yeah. Uh, he fled Russia months ago after getting his draft papers to go to Ukraine and fight. And he's like, nope, I'm getting the hell out of here. You know, the Russian government, by the way, is currently charging Russian families $1,500 to transport their dead uh, son's corpses, for, you know, kids uh, kids who got killed in the war there. So uh, this guy went from being a bigwig in the Russian government to driving a truck here in the United States. He was the agriculture minister for a region of Russia that was about the size of California. And he said, uh, in Russia, the main reason people get into politics is to steal money which is no big shock. That's why American Republicans love Vladimir Putin. They're kind of on the same page as he is. And uh, this guy said he didn't want to participate in any of that at all. Even though he's 48, you know, they need warm bodies. So even though 48 is technically too old to be drafted, they need cannon fodder over there. So so he uh, fled to the United States. Found himself in Texas, and now he's uh, working in Michigan as a as a trucker. Hey, listen, you know, for a while they were worried that truckers were all going to be put out of work because uh, trucking was going to be all automatic, and then the bottom really fell out of that. I mean, the the testing on autonomous trucks was not good, even though these companies were just drooling at the thought of firing all these truckers. And having um, Logan-style trucks on the highways, it didn't go that way. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio on the app there, you can leave us talkback messages anywhere you are. Alan, I'm going to be completely honest here. Booger eating is pretty gross, but I would rather eat your boogers than go without butter in my life. Love you, bye. Hmm. Good point. Mm-hmm. Well, you could call it uh, nostril butter, right? And by the way, everybody who's texting me, yeah, eating boogers helps build your immune system. That's technically true, but nobody's eating them for that. You know what else uh, boosts your immune system? Not eating crap all the time or, or exercising. If you're relying on eating your booger, nobody goes, oh, my God, how are you in such great shape? I eat all my boogers. No one says that. So, yes, while possibly technically true, nobody's doing it for those reasons. Mm, mm, mm. Nevertheless, Mary's right. 
Should that moment of weakness be held against I don't even know if weakness is the right word. We were being open, honest. Well, but we all are here all the time. Caring. That's not Caring. that's not uh, offsides. We're all we're expected to do that here. That's what I expect. But uh, you're never vulnerable. Who? You. No, vulnerability and honesty are two, two separate things. You don't have to be vulnerable to be honest. Sometimes you do. Yeah, of course. Sometimes you do. That was But a talking moment. about eating your boogers, that was an honest, you admitted to that, and that was very honest. I think vulnerability and honesty go together when it is something that might be a little embarrassing or that you don't want to admit to. That's fine. And, and I appreciate the candor. But none of us are getting pats on the back for being honest here. That's part of what we're supposed to be doing. I'm and and what do they say? Should people be judged by the worst day of their life? Of course not. And I bet that you eating a booger wasn't even the worst day of your life. No. No. Might have been the best. I just don't know. I don't know. Which, <laughs> Is there any chance I, that I, it was part of the best day? It could have been part of the best that. day. Not I don't because know what the best day of my life. Not was. because of that, but not because of that. But could it have coincided with the best day of your life. I'm trying to think of what the best day of my life has been to this point. You know what? Probably the the day that I recorded my album at Hilarities, my first album, Hillbilly Bougie, and my dad was there. That was one of the best days of my life. Yeah. It was sold out, a lot of fun. He was getting pats on the back, taking pictures with people. Someone recognized him at the urinal. So it's all tied to his. No, but I'm saying that was all there. And we sold out a show during, you know, the pandemic, recorded my first album. Like, that was a really good day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to eat Hilarity's food. I got to meet a bunch of people. Brian was there. Oh, meeting people, yeah. I love meeting people. You don't like meeting people. <laughs> he likes M E A T I N G. I, I, yeah! I like meeting people. That might have been one of the best things. Eating boogers, eating, eating, eating boogers. Eating hilarity's food, food was the best day of your life, you well, said? I'm saying it goes they, they into it. They got good really food. so good. And then the atmosphere of it. I don't remember what happened during the day that day, but that night was a really, really good night. I don't okay. think I've ever had, I don't think I know my best day of my life. Maybe, I don't think it's happened yet. Well, you have to have had a really good day up until this point. I've had some, I've had a series of good days, but I can't think... One has like you mean pinpointing out. one where you go that is the greatest like, thing. Like, like I would look back at like me being hired on this show that was a really good day, but oh, I also that, that is the worst day of my life. <laughs> um, like that was something that I really wanted, um, that I prayed for and I got, and then uh, my gra- my college. See, Bill, prayers do work. Yeah, his did, mine didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they were really at loggerheads over the yeah. same day. No, I love you, pound cake. I know. Busting your chops. Is yours, Alan, the day that Nora was born? Well, I have three children, so you can't I can't. Uh, yeah, well, you, you can have a favorite. Mm-hmm. But I don't. Um, yeah, those were great days. Great days. I don't think I could ever uh, pinpoint a, uh, to my detriment, that's not how my brain works. I, I wish it did. I would love to to go, boy, that was a great. I you mean, know what? In recent, one of the best days I've had in a really long time was when we celebrated Father's Day this year for Brian. We went to the botanical gardens. We had an amazing dinner in Little Italy. We like uncompetable. All, yeah, we all hung out. Like it was like top to bottom. Everyone was in like a silly, goofy mood all day. We were having so much fun. We had great food. That was in recent times. That's probably the best day I've had in a long in in a while. Hmm. You can't think of anything like that. We're like, wow, what an amazing day that was. Like I think back to yeah, vacation. there's amazing days, but you know, yeah, I think back. I to, mean, like, like every day is kind of the best day of my life. Because you don't have a wife, right? <laughs> no, I have. I just have great days. Uh, I mean, like show days where we do big comedy shows. Like those are great. Like the, the recording my specials are great days. Mm-hmm. It's a great feeling. Uh, the releases of those are very good. But then also, just like today, I'm excited. Just go home and play video games. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good day. Does that rise to the level of one of the best days? You can, <laughs> you can. I mean, everybody's different. Because, but that's the thing is like, I, I, I'm trying to categorize them. They're so different because they're, on those other good days, there's still a lot of stress that goes on. Mm-hmm. So, like, like when you know, recording an album, even with it all going right, there is still. 
But it's stress. fun stress. It's fun it's stress. It's good stress. It's good stress, but it's still not the same as just not having a care in the world, which makes it for a very good day for me. Yeah. What was yours, so, Cody? The Catherine Funds Floating Fandango, I think, will be the best day of my life. <laughs> Could if be one we of them. all do coke together. I can't. You, God damn it, Mary. I'm going to pray about this. Pound cake, pray with me. Your prayers seem to work better. <laughs> okay. Uh, Pound cake and Bill are going to pray that everyone decides to do cocaine <laughs> on the uh, on the cruise. Do it in a fun way. Don't be a jerk. About Is anyone it. going to do the little Titanic thing on the boat? You no, know, stand at the. Do you want the... to? No. Uh, I kind of it kind of be a. I'll have Brian hold you did. if you want. On the bow of the ship, the King of the World thing. No, the Titanic. That is Titanic. Is that I'm king of the world? Mm-hmm. That's what he says when oh, he's up okay. there. Yeah. I'm flying, Jack. Can you do that one? You mean someone with their arms around your waist? Mm-hmm. With my arms out. Well, your mom's going to be there. Let's get a picture of her doing that to you. She probably would be the one to want to do it. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I, it can't be that you have never done that on our one of our cruises, though. I've never done that before, because that, before, that's where the band used to play, right at the front. Well, that's probably where Mattitude's going to be this time. Well, get around Mattitude. He has a he has a table with a uh, some turntables on wow. it. Wow. So that no, just because he's a DJ, no respect, respect for the artist. No. Gotcha. Because <laughs> he's your former roomie. He was never my roomie. Didn't he crash on your old couch or something? That's not. A, doesn't make him a roomie. He's no, a guy that crashed he, on my futon. He's never crashed at anything in my house. On my F-ton. I like Mattitude. You know, it's funny. Because we are on the radio, there's people that listen every day but don't engage with our social media or the YouTube or anything like that. And some, and I posted one of our clips, and someone goes, where's Alan's beard? Like, you are known for having a beard. I'm like, he hasn't had a beard in, like, four years. I'm not known for having right, a beard, Right, but no. this person seemed to think that you, you, you're a beard regular. And I was like, it's been so long since you've had a beard. It's been... Well, you have beard during Listen, the wintertime. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, but mm. I, I, I don't think you had one last year, and I don't Mm-mm. think you had. I, I think the last beard you had was the one that you dyed black. It was like Maybe. two years ago. Yeah. No, that yeah. was like four years four, ago. That was a uh, that was twenty twenty one, I believe. No, that was twenty nineteen because that was pre. Oh, because we didn't do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was the last one before the pandemic, so yeah. it would have been twenty nineteen. No, much to my wife's chagrin, I don't always have a beard. She wants me to have a beard, but I look like Santa. So that's not I, that's not and a good she look has for so me. much chagrin about it. Yeah, she really does. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, no. Listen, welcome back. Uh, maybe you've just awakened from a coma or something. I don't I, know what you're. She found it on TikTok. So I, she, like I said, she could be listening all the time. I see, and just never see it. Never see you. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll grow one this winter. There you go. You know, when we leave for the year, it's going to be almost three weeks that we're going to be gone, which I hate, but. Uh, that's just how the calendar works out. So maybe I'll um, we could just maybe I'll you know, just uh, I don't know. I don't want to work. We well, gotta have a break. You can't work for Christmas. It's illegal. I think that we should do a show. You know, a lot of people Christmas. don't. Uh, uh, a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, but it's illegal. I see. Dude, when I was doing the logs, did I ever tell you guys this? That when I was doing the logs, Probably. our old PD had me come in on Christmas Eve and yeah. work for like nine hours. Jason Carr. Yeah. Because I had to do the logs for the week through, from Christmas through New Year's Day. I had to get them all done before Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. I was I was furious. I was really mad about that. <laughs> I'm so learning mad. how to massage the logs. Because for me, I feel like that's the time of year you sit, you eat, you hang out, you relax, you nap, you meet family. Yeah, if you're not in radio. Except you're not in radio. You're mm-hmm. on the radio. Yeah. He wanted you to help out because he needed extra hands. Because everyone got fired. Right. But I don't want to work for nine hours on Christmas Eve. Understood. I, a party. I fully understand now. that. My aunt made hanky pankies. I didn't get to have any. What's hanky a, pankies. What's a hanky panky? Oh, you know what? It's like the, Is that like a Dutch baby? No. They're like uh, mm-hmm. little rye bread. They're like thin little bread. No, I don't want to call them crackers. They're like really thin pieces of rye bread. And then it's oh, like Velveeta. Yeah, but it's not a cracker. And then it's like Velveeta cheese and sausage mixed together. And then you put it in the oven and bake it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I never They're had so one. So good. Never had a hanky panky. They're so good. <laughs> I'll eat 100 of them, dude. They're my so good. My auntie makes some hanky pankies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a tradition. She always hosts. You might have to make that. Cause... Dude, there's you can come over for Christmas Eve. 
It's loud, but you'll enjoy it. He's loud. I know. He'll fit right in. Well, let, I think that should be a TV show. I go to your family, you come to mine. Right. <laughs> you see which one's which one's louder. Mine. <laughs> no. You have more you may have more people, but yeah. I think we cover more ground than you. You guys My, be shocked at how pound, cake, pound cake's family can be louder <laughs> with fewer people is what he's trying to say. Your family is what? Just incredibly quiet. Yours is probably Just like trying Brian's. To make- Trying to make conversation, but it's, it's, it it stalls out every three minutes. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I go home and see my family, like we just kind of kick around and shoot the shrimp. Well, when it's when my brothers and sisters are around, it's more like that. But because everybody's gone, it's usually just like me and my younger brother, and then some of my older uncles and aunts, and my ninety-something-year-old grandma, and then some people from my parents' church that I don't know, and it's just awkward. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know, telling jokes about how I hated this upbringing. Yeah. Like, what's what's going on in your life? What are you talking about in your comedy routines? The, the downfall of man. I don't know. Just leave me alone. Tell me a joke. No. You can use that in your little skit. Oh, my God. Whenever they say that, I just walk away. You should. I just do. I go, nope, and I walk away. Oh, what? people are telling me hanky pankies are shrimp on a shingle. Uh, is that the same name? Yeah, I don't or barf know. on a rug. Yeah, I've had. I've my never dad heard used to make that. either of those. It's I've, a it's a military thing. Well, it's a hanky panky in our household or our I family, see. and they're very very good. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, it's literally just cheese and sausage on a piece of toasted bread. Yeah, it's, it's an so old good. old fashioned Polish mistake. See, my aunt mm-hmm. makes. I think it. my wife's family makes those, but I, I've never heard them called hanky pankies. My aunt makes the stuffed cabbage. Oh my god. I, is good. I, I have her bring, like, give me a tray so I could take home. That's that's the thing when I go home. Everyone knows I'm broke, uh-huh. so people are secretly handing me money and handing me trays of food. They're like, Cody, take this home. We're like, we know you need it. So I will eat on it for for weeks. That's how holidays were at my dad's house. They would go out and buy, like, from GFS, or they would go buy styrofoam to-go boxes because there would be so much food at Thanksgiving and Christmas. I would come home with like three or four to-go boxes and then that's what I would eat for a week. There's a stack in the garage. It's taller than me. (laughs) You just take one and that's your tray. I have one for dessert, one for entrees, one for extra. Oh, yeah. (laughs) See, I usually do it by like, I'll have like two different boxes of sides and then one for the meat and then one for whatever else I can throw in there. Do you bring your own mini cooler so you could take the cans of pop home? No. Oh, okay. Hey, Rat. Hey, little radio buddy. How's everyone going there? <laughs> What's up? Oh, man. Uh, when I grew up, I was born in Brecksville, and two doors down for me happened to be uh, Ryan Dunn from Jackass was born. So we grew up together, kicking it over there in the woods and doing all kinds of weird stuff. And, uh, and I can remember uh, I wasn't a booger eater because one of our friends lived down the road, and he just had a constant neon green stream going from his nostril to his mouth, and it just was so disgusting, even when we were kids. Mm -hmm. Never ate boogers. But two things we did do that was weird, we would pick the tar bubbles off the tar on the road when it was really hot, and chew them like gum. Oh, that's that's so much worse. That explains a few things, Rat. Yeah, that does. Yeah, and then the worst part is, have you ever looked at a fire hydrant where the big, you know, they have to twist the cap on there, and they, they, they grease them all the time. You'll see the fire department going, oh, you know, Alan, you know. Yep. Um, we used to get that grease and get a glob of it and put it in our mouth <sighs> and see how long we could hold it in our mouth. Without throwing up? Rat, were your, was your family not grocery shopping, or what's the... Oh, my God. Alan, I was such a bad kid. My mom actually, I was such a brat, she would give me a little plastic bag with some frozen Bill Jack in it because that's all that would make me stop (laughs) crying. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, and then. Dog food? She was was giving rat dog food is what was going on there. and. My okay. Is a beautiful person, yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you, Rat. Stay safe out there. I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of bad kids traditionally who are out there eating asphalt bubbles and grease off of the fire plugs. But Rat's a different breed of cat. So what are you gonna do about that? I got a break. I'll have those Cleveland Air Show tickets for you a little bit later on. We'll also get to the Bill Squire Friday Get Down around these parts. Irrespective of how often you engage with the show, you know that's uh, when the weekend starts.
You want to text for something, 35192. You can watch live if you like at alancockshow.com. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free.